Hi everyone, welcome to the next Facebook Live. Um, this week we're actually talking about the Martyr Syndrome. Um, the Martyr Syndrome is something that is rampant in our society and it's also something that we don't even realize is happening most of the time. So um, as people kind of jump on, could you just let me know that, you're, that you can listen? If you, if you can hear me, just let me know. Um, and um, if everything's working good, that would be awesome. Okay, so can you can you listen to me? Can you hear me and can you see me? Okay, before I before I just talk away. Sweet. Okay, thanks. All right, I'm gonna get started. So I'm gonna talk about the the martyr syndrome today, mainly because um, it's just such a big thing. It's just such a massive thing, and we don't really realize how much it impacts our world. So. Most people live in this on some level and it's this concept where we please everybody in our planet and then us and It's just such a it's just such a sad thing because for the most part um, We're losing love for ourselves. We're losing priorities for ourselves um, And we're not actually looking after ourselves in any way So when I talk about the martyr syndrome, it's not necessarily that oh my goodness I'm doing this for you, but I feel so terrible um, and I'm gonna do it, but even though I don't have the time. It's not really about that kind of open martyrish stuff, even though that does exist. It really is more about what are our priorities? What are we actually doing? And why is everybody feeling so drained? And I've literally been speaking to, I can't even tell you, numerous women in my practice who are saying, look, I'm just empty, I have nothing to give. I literally have nothing. Um, I'm giving and I'm giving and I'm giving. I'm trying to be the wife and the mother and the and the career person and the and the girlfriend and the sister and the whatever it is, whatever roles that you're playing, and you're trying to be the dutiful daughter and and the the perfect woman and all of this kind of stuff. And and it goes for men too. This isn't just for women, but women tend to do it more than men. Um, but it really is this sense of trying to do and be everything to everybody else except for yourself. And it's absolutely draining. It's exhausting. It's um, it's basically emptying your love tank. And I want to talk about the love tank a little bit because I talk about it quite a lot with my clients. But it basically, it comes from the the guy that wrote the Five Love Languages book, and I can't remember his name, but he's pretty awesome um, because he talks a lot about this concept of we actually need to be filling our own tanks up. We need to actually be looking at what it is that we need on a daily basis. And we need to be doing that for ourselves. And the reason we want to do that is because if our love tank is empty, when we give to other people, we're usually giving it out of resentment. We're not actually giving it out of love. So your mother, for example, mothers are fantastic at this, might give and give and give and give and give. But what you're feeling is resentment, resentment pissed off, fear, overwhelm. She's doing this for me, but I can see that she's not too happy about it. She's doing this for me, but I still feel really bad. So what I find is that um, for a lot of women in particular and mothers in particular, um, it's just so important to make sure that you stop and pay attention to, to how you're feeling about things. So this is part of kind of connecting with your intuition. How do you really feel about not going out on Thursday night because your husband has to work? How do you really feel about having that third child? How do you really feel about looking after yourself? Because at the end of the day, if we don't do that, if we're not looking after ourselves, then we can't be anything to anybody else. And um, the priority list always must be, if you have a partner and kids, the priority list always must be you, then your partner, and then your kids. If you do it in any other order, I don't care what order you try to put that in, it doesn't work. If you're single, then don't put your friends first. Don't put your parents first. Don't put your siblings first. Put you first. You love you first, and then you can love other people. Women are the vortex of the household, which means that how they think, feel, and vibrate is exactly how the rest of the family thinks, feels, and vibrates. Whether we like it or not, whether we want it to or not, that's how it is. And for single dads, same thing. When there's no woman holding the space, the men then have to step into that um, feminine role 
and then B do and vibrate how the rest of the family vibrates. And so it's a lot of pressure. It's actually a lot of pressure to do and be everything. And women to, in today's society put so much pressure on themselves to be everything to everybody. And I'm telling you right now, it's impossible. It's impossible. We can't do it. We can be as much as we need to be for ourselves. We can be as much as we can be for other people. But at the end of the day, if we give and give and give and give and put everybody else la everybody else first and us last, well, then we're just not going to function. We're not going to get by. Does anyone, can you guys like understand or, or appreciate what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? Because it's, um, it's such a big thing and it's... Um, and I wish I could probably say it a bit more succinctly and a little bit more um, clearly, but it's it's just so big in our society. It's just one of those things that that it's grossly unsaid, it's it's grossly undervalued, and it's one of those things that it's it's kind of it's causing like an almost cancerous situation in a lot of women. So particularly in busy cities, and it happens everywhere, but also particularly in busy cities. Thank you a lot of saying yes. Um, life is busy. We are in overwhelm almost constantly. We are constantly in a state of stress and drama because, you know, you've got to get over there in 30 minutes and then you've got to be there in 45 minutes and then you've got the work to do and then you've got the kids to handle and then you've got husbands or ex-husbands or boyfriends or whatever it is that you need to be handling. You've got career stuff. You've got to juggle career and exercise and friends and family and it's, it's hard. It's tricky. And for the most part, we're doing it on our own. So for the most part, we're trying to balance how to get all of those balls and keep them in the air while at the same time, what, somehow managing to look after ourselves? Like, how do we do that? How, how actually do we do that? And what I'd like to invite you to start thinking about is rather than trying to keep all those balls in the air, try to keep your own ball in the air. How do I look after myself today? How do I show myself unconditional love today? Because when you can start to do that as your priority, Remember, you first, partner second, kids third. Friends are not even on that list for now because friends, friends are amazing. Friends are what goes, you know, what helps the world go round. But at the end of the day, um, it's not actually going to get that love tank filled. And if you keep relying on your friends to fill your love tank, you are never going to be fulfilled ever. And not only that, your friends are going to probably walk away feeling quite drained most of the time. So what I'm talking about is a real sense of empowerment. So martyrs, for the most part, will give to all of these people in an effort to have love, to be loved, to feel loved. And if they don't do it, um, they, they kind of lose this sense of external validation. So at the end of the day, we all want to be loved. We all want to feel valued. We all want to feel accepted. We all want to feel respected. We all want to feel like we're giving value and that we are valued for who we are. But a lot of people feel like they have to do that by doing things for other people, by martyring themselves to everybody in their lives. And I'm telling you right now, it doesn't work because at the end of the day, you're going to walk away and if you have a week without your friends or if your husband's away or if your boyfriend's on camp or if your kids are away, who have you got to fill you up? Like there is literally nobody. You must learn how to do it for yourself. And that could be anything, anything, anything at all. Ask yourself, check in with your intuition, ask your body, what do I need to do for myself today? How can I show myself unconditional love today? And that could be anything. It could be going to have a cup of tea. It could be having a bath. It could be um, eating a yummy treat, although it's pretty rare that that's the case if you're really listening. Um, it could be talking to someone. It could be doing a meditation. It could be praying. It could be having extra sleep. It actually doesn't matter what it is. It's totally irrelevant what it is. What's relevant and the only thing that matters and the only question that is, that's important is how do I show myself unconditional love today? How do I look after myself today? And wait for the answer to come to you. Don't think that it has to be a certain way. And I, I know a lot of women will kind of answer with things like, well, I go exercising. Okay, well, that's great. But is the exercising actually filling you up? Is it filling your love tank? Is it nurturing and nourishing you? And if the answer is no, then exercise is only one of the things that you need to do. There's something else that you need to do. Um, if you're not really sure what it is, you could even ask yourself, okay, what would my mother have done if my mother was a nurturing, loving, wonderful mother? What would she have done to help me feel better? Or 
how would my kids like to feel nurtured and nourished today? Or if I had a child, how would I nurture and nourish that child? Would I nurture and nourish that child by giving them a hug? We can hug ourselves. We can literally hug it out with ourselves to give ourselves some nurturing. It sounds ridiculous, but it's so powerful. And it can just be a really small way to start nourishing and nurturing and loving yourself. Because at the end of the day, what we want everybody in the world to feel, men, women, children alike, is that their love tanks are full. So the love tank being full must include you prioritizing yourself as number one. And then when you can do that, you can start to let go of all of the other things that you feel that you should be doing in order to be loved and validated. And that's not to say you drop off the face of the earth and you just only do stuff for yourself because, you know, we're not living in bubbles. But we're also not living, um, we're not living emotionally isolated either. Um, and how you feel, how you function and how you look after yourself filters in, into every aspect of your life. If you've got kids that aren't working so well, if you've got, um, if you've got aspects of your relationship that are not wor working well, if you've got um, a situation that you're really struggling with, ask yourself if you're looking after yourself first. Um, do whatever it takes to kind of bring in that sense of love um, and connection for yourself so that then you can start being for other people. Does all of this make sense? Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, so this is a really awesome question. Thanks, Alana. So Alana's basically saying, martyrs have difficulty saying no to people as they create an environment around them where others expect their behavior. So how do martyrs, as they change, stay strong through those social barriers? Um, very, very good question. And this is gonna to happen to anybody that has to go through any kind of change ever. There's going to be a sense of subconscious sabotage around that because it is a pattern of behavior. Um, and it can be very, very, very tricky to step out of that pattern of behavior. So one of the things that I would encourage um, them to do is to seek somebody that's going to support them. So that could just be somebody that supports them emotionally, but it could also be someone like myself who does kinesiology. It's also part of my course as well, just to try and help people shift their, their subconscious patterns of behavior. Because remember from last week, it's much stronger than the conscious mind. Um, so if you want to, if you want to actually get onto my list for starters, just to get some, um, uh, information about what's going to come out with my course, just, um, the, the link should be below or above. It's the Connolly pop yourself in the mailing list. So you can actually get some information about when this is going to come out because there's a whole bunch of help. To, to bring you through those subconscious sabotagings because at the end of the day, every time we want to change a behavior, we always have the, the subconscious mind will throw up for us everything that isn't, everything that isn't that behavior. So if you want to start t stepping into more loving type behaviors for yourself where others other people are expecting you to do for them, um, you're going to have a sense of um, everything that's really good about that and everything that's really bad about that. And you have to work through that. You have to day after day after day come back to how can I show myself love today? And it's a really tricky thing to get through for a lot of people who are used to putting other people last. Um, but if you can have some help through meditation or prayer or through someone who does kinesiology or, med or, or hypnotherapy or, or something to basically help you through that patterning help you come out of the other side of that patterning that's really really powerful um, so again you can do that through my course and you can also do that on your own as well you can do diaries about how you're feeling so you can work through your feelings as you come up with your own blocks around that and also some people are really really ready so a lot of people who watch this video might actually be really ready to shift they've done all the work that they need to do they've worked through whatever sabotaging patterns they've got and now they just want to know what it takes to undo that pattern. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Do you have any other parts that you wanna ask about that?
So while I'm waiting, um, it's, um, oh yeah, no, she's got it. Okay, cool. Um, the reason I call it martyr behavior and, and, and some people might take that the wrong way. Um, it's not about, it's not about trying to label people with anything or try to create a syndrome or anything like that. It's not about that. It's just talking about a really worldwide global issue where people are just so used to having to please other people first. They feel like they need to. There's this kind of social obligation that, well, why are you doing that for you when you haven't done that for me? Why are you doing that? You're being so selfish, right? So a lot of martyrs feel like they need to do everything they can to not be selfish because selfish is kind of seen as a dirty word, right? But at the end of the day, if you look at it, you've got to flip everything around. If you're not selfish, if you don't look after yourself, if you don't look after your own needs, multiple other things are going to happen. The first is that you're going to have a situation where um, you're giving out of resentment, you're giving out of fear, um, and you're giving out of a sense of being empty. So the people on the other side are not going to feel that. But secondly, what you're also going to do is every time you're around other people and you need help, you're more likely to be draining them because what you're trying to do is kind of latch onto something that's going to bring you a sense of energy. And it's, it's very powerful how this works. And before you realize it, you realize, particularly if you become conscious of it, wow, I just really drained that person. I just really drained that person. I just really drained that person. I'm throwing out my, these things are going bad stories and I'm still giving, 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 giving to everybody in my life. But at the same time, what I'm doing is I'm sucking other people dry as I try to refill my batteries. Um, and this happens frequently. You, you'll probably, even in your mind, think, oh, yes, I know that person that does that. And when I'm around that person, that's how I feel and, and, and so on and so forth. And the only antidote to all of that is to get back to being selfish, right? Selfish is not a dirty word. Selfish is absolutely essential if you want to be for others, anything at all. So always bring yourself in number one and then bring number two in to your partner or whoever it is that you might have as a significant person in your life. And then if you have kids, they come in as number three. So when you can shift that um, priority list around, what you'll find is that everything gets easier. And if we come back to that concept that women are the vortex of the household, if you're working, if you're functioning, if you're coming from a state of a full love tank where you can give out of love and not out of resentment, then the rest of your family works really well. When I get a lot of kids that come into my practice, I usually look at the parents and I see how they're going. And I look at the mum and see how drained she is and how overwhelmed she is. And usually what I'll do at that point is work on the mum. Because when the mum starts working better, then the child starts working better. And it's just quite amazing how, how massively important that is in the, in the household, that the woman always comes first for the woman. Because otherwise, everything falls apart. The children start to have um, issues with whatever emotional stuff that might be happening. Um, there's usually issues with the, with the partnership, with the relationship that she's got with her significant other. And men, this happens for men as well. So, it, you know, it may seem like I'm just focusing on women, um, but it does really affect them usually more. Um, but then they kind of, um, you know, a lot of men can do this depending on their relationship and depending on what's happening as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really, really common thing. It happens a lot. And we have this huge perception in society that being selfish is actually a bit of a sin. It's actually really not very giving. It's not something that should be seen as a good thing. But I think we've labeled it super, super badly because at the end of the day, if we're not selfish, how can we possibly be in any kind of state of mind to then do anything for anybody else? It's, 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 quite, it's quite an amazing um, kind of flip around, I suppose, in terms of societal patterning. And most women are going to have trouble kind of swallowing this if they haven't heard it before because, um, you know, well, how am I going to find time for that? You know, I've got my, I've got my kids I've got to look after. I've got my job I've got to do. When am I going to find time for that? And my answer is it's never about time. It's always about priorities. What are your priorities? If your priority is you, number one, you will always find the time. If your priority is you one, husband second or partner second, you're always going to have time for you and your partner. If you say my top three priorities in my entire life are me, my partner, and then my kids, you will always have time for you, your partner, and your kids. 
if your priority is money, if it's work, if it's exercise, if it's meditation, if it's anything apart from those three as your top priorities, um, then other things will start to slide. And that's not to say that you can't exercise and you can't meditate and you can't work hard. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is if you use time as a reason not to look after yourself, if you use time as a reason not to nurture and nourish and fill that love tank of yours, you're going to constantly start to look outside of yourself for that validation of love and, and worthiness. And you don't need it. You actually don't need it. At the end of the day, the only person that can give that to you is you. And the only way that you do that is to prioritize yourself and get selfish. Then when you can roll on from that and you move on from this, well, let's get over this concept that selfishness is bad. We could call it self-love if that makes people feel better. So why don't we call it self-love? Let's get into self-loving more often. As soon as we get into self-loving, then we can love others. And then we're going to do it from a full love tank. We're going to have overflowing love and we're going to be able to do it. So one of the other tools that you can do if you really want to is do something called the five love languages quiz. You can just Google it um, and you can actually find out what your love language is. So when you know what that is, you can actually start doing that for yourself. So if your love language is quality time, then it might just be a case of making sure that you get good quality time with yourself, good quality time with your friends and your partner and your kids. And when you can do that, then you start to feel more nourished and nurtured. If it's physical touch, it could be going to get yourself a massage. It could be going to get some Reiki or some kinesiology or something. It could be um, going and having a bath because that's also kinesthetic. It could be anything at all that kind of fulfills that love, love language for yourself. And the Love Languages book, which is great, it'll often talk about the, the love that you need to give to other people. But I just want to take it another step further and say, actually, this is what we need to be doing for ourselves. If your love language is gifts, buy yourself a little gift every now and then. It doesn't have to be a big deal. It could be, um, you know, buying yourself a little um, piece of chocolate. It could be buying yourself a nice mug that you see without going crazy with money if you don't have it. Um, and without being a shopaholic because, you know, that's a whole other level of numbing. So we're not going there. But, you know, make yourself a little gift for yourself, whatever it might be to kind of fulfill your love language so you can actually feel like you're being nurtured and nourished. So I encourage you to kind of really start looking at yourself, really start being aware of, am I giving myself to everybody else? Am I, am I actually being nurtured? Is the stuff that I'm doing every day to look after myself, is that filling my love tank? And if the answer is no, you need to shift what you're doing. And if the answer is yes, then maybe you need to do more of it if you still feel empty. And over time, what you'll find is you'll start to create habits where you do more and more and more loving things for yourself so that, you know, you actually have that overflowing love tank that you can give to other people. And you know what? We're human as well. We're going to drop the ball. It's not going to happen sometimes. And then that's super important to bring more self-love in. So how do we bring self-love in? We just forgive ourselves. We go, it's okay, darling. I jumped off the wagon. Um, I haven't been looking after myself. I'm just going to start doing that again. I'm going to start doing that this week. Or I'm going to start doing it right now, which is an even better one. Does anyone have any questions? Does that kind of make sense to everybody? If everyone's pretty happy with that, um, I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, please, if there's any questions, just pop them in the box below. I'm more than happy to kind of answer any questions that anybody has. If you don't agree, totally, write in the message box below and tell me how you think. Um, I'm more than happy to talk with people about, uh, about all of this. And, um, you know, I think it's such a massive thing. If we can teach ourselves how to do this, we're gonna teach society how to get into a much better place in their own minds. And everyone's going to shift from this. Everyone's going to create um, a new reality of happiness and love in their lives rather than overwhelm and fear, which is just so rampant. Um, you know, I see so many women who end up in complete overwhelm or they're, or they're depressed or they even end up, you know, suicidal. And this happens so often because they're in a state of overwhelm and fear because they're not in a space of empowerment where they can look after themselves and feel loved. 
and um, it's it's just crazy how important this is so um, jump on my mailing list if you want more information about the the course about the intuitive living course and um, and just comment away and, and share the video if it feels if it feels right to you because I think the more people that can understand this I think the better society will be all right so this is Kate I am signing off so good to see you guys or hear and see the writing um, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next week see you later